Okay, let's do this. So I create a test.cpp file and let's edit it. We need a main function, of course. Okay. And since we are returning an int, let's return zero in the beginning. And let's talk about the issue first. Suppose we have dx over dt as a function of f, which depends on t, x, and y. In terms of formulation, it is x plus 2 times y. And we have another function, dy over dt, which is called as g, and it depends on the same set of variables. And it has the formulation of 3 times x plus 2 times y. Things to notice. X and Y are your dependent variables, and T is your independent variable. Also notice that we need this specific form in order to be able to solve this differential equation by runge kutta method. Another thing to notice is that the X over dy depends on y, depends on y and the Y over d sorry, the X over dt depends on Y, and the Y over dt depends on X. So this means that these two set of uh, differential equations, they are coupled. You cannot solve them separately. They have to be solved simultaneously and side by side. So the aim of the video today is to show you guys that how to implement a runge kutta method which is capable of solving coupled system of differential equations. So one thing I noticed is that the students are very fine uh, in order to, to implement a runge kutta method which solves a single um, differential equation, but when it comes to the couple, coupled system of uh, differential equations, nah, they are having issues and troubles in working their head around this. So the aim of the video today is to show you how to implement such a runge kutta method for a coupled system of differential equations. And we do this together. And I have solved this on a piece of paper ready here. And we can, at the end of this video, uh, we can see whether we have solved this um, correctly or not. So first thing to know is that how we need to know how far we are going to solve um, this system of equation. Um, in other words, we need to know uh, the number of iterations. We call it um, as n and we say this is number of iterations. And we know also it should be given by the user. Of course, we need to um, inform the user that please enter the enter the number of iterations. Okay, and we need to get this value into n. Now that we have our n, we can construct our solution vectors. I'm going to use vector for that of type double. That was the size of um, n. We copy that a million times. We use it for x and y. So t is sort of the variable we use it to uh, march in our solution. So it will be each in each iteration, it will be the previous t plus um, a step size or h. And since we are talking about marching in the solution, we need to also have a, a step size, and that is h. Okay, that's the value of 0 0.02. Now we need to have our initial conditions. And namely, we need to know what is t of 0. We start with um, 0. This one for x and this one for y. Let me check my papers. Okay, it should be 6 for x and 4 for y. Okay, now we have our solution vectors, we have our step signs, we have our initial conditions. What we are missing is basically this f and g, right? And also note that we have used stdc in c out and std vector, and we are not respecting the include statements. So let's add include io stream here and also include uh, vector now we need uh, to declare those f and g uh, functions they are going to dump out a double and the definition is also here they depend on t x and y so that is my declaration of course we need data types in c plus plus 
type of t should be a double type of x also should be a double type of y it is also a double but notice that this way of writing we are basically copying values of tx and y so we put an ampersand here to show that we want to um, send the values by reference also notice that this tx and y uh, so this f is not going to change any of these uh, variables so basically it is just going to do some multiplication division subtraction addition and dump out uh, just a single double value and um, that means we are safe to throw in a const here and a const here and a const here we copy this one we use this for a g and also note that this is basically just a declaration and we need to define them here in order to do that we need this curly braces we need to return something and that something is already written on the screen do not forget to put your semicolon and also we need another set of curly braces and we need to return this function here just copy and paste and do not forget to put your semicolon all right very good now we have our f and g so what is missing in this package is the runge kuta method itself right so how am i going to formulate this i don't think i'm going to dump out anything so it should be a um, a void and i call it as runge kuta and i explicitly say coupled to stress that this is for a coupled system of differential equation but what do we need to throw in here we definitely need our solution vectors we need our step size for the solution and also we need how far we need to go so this is my prototype let's say this is my um, uh, declaration so what is the type of x it is defined already here it is a um, standard vector we can actually copy and paste it and we are sending these values by uh, reference y has also the same type we send it by reference and also t has the same type we send it also by reference h is of type double we send it by reference and n the number of iterations is int and we send also by reference also note that this h and n are not going to change so we also throw a const um, here we um, save our file we go for a definition now we need a set of curly braces okay for runge kuta you know that we need some um, intermediate values and those intermediate values are uh, called uh, let's say conventionally as k values for a fourth order runge kuta it is k1 k2 k3 and k4 but since we are dealing with a system of uh, couple differential equations i'm going to use capital letters of the same functions in order for you for you guys to be able to distinguish them very easily so this means they are going to be of type um, double we need f1 f2 f3 f4 g1 g2 g3 and g4 and if you are sensitive you can also um, initialize them by zero so this is our solution loop but we don't have any loop here so we construct one we start with zero and we need to go until our um, iteration number and we don't forget to put uh, i plus plus curly braces again and what we need to do is to calculate these intermediate values f1 of course is going to be calculated by function f and the f is given here it needs t x and y and we need to throw in the old value of t the old value of x and the old value of y and i put my semicolon before i forget it and i copy that use this one for g okay f1 g1 is already calculated first thing achieved we need to copy that of course and paste it here and use it for f2 and g2 f and g here are fine but we know that by definition we need to go here 
by half a step. And also here, by definition, it should be F1 multiplied by another half a step. And for Y, we need to supply G1 times um, another half a step. And we can basically delete this one and copy this to make it easier for us. And this is completely now true. But we need to change this one to G, right? It is very important to notice this. Um, the next thing is we need to copy these two lines again. We need to calculate F3 and G3. Half a step here is completely fine. Half a step here is also fine. But what is not fine is that this should be F2 and this should be F2. Also, here we have uh, G2 and G2. Half a step is also okay. The final one is basically the full step. And that is we copy these two lines, which is easier to construct. And we need to change this one to F4 and G4. F and G are here again fine. And here we need to go a full step. So this means H. Here is F3 times H, the full step. And here is G3 times H, again a full step. This is the same story, G3 times a full step. And this one is plus F3 times a full step. And do not forget to put here for T as well a full step. Okay. So we have our intermediate values. Now we need to update our solution. So this means X of I plus 1. So the new um, solution will be the previous one, previous value. Again, by definition, it is h over 6 times f1 plus 2 times f2 plus 2 times f3 plus f4. And I put my semicolon. And I use the same thing, but with y. And we know that we, we need to use G here instead of F, right? And also we need to update our, uh, let's say, uh, time variable. So this should be the previous one, basically plus H. So I think this should be completely fine, but maybe the compiler has another <laughs> opinion but uh, before uh, the compilation step we need to uh, use our function right <laughs> otherwise it will be very dubious so before returning zero we need to use our rung ekuta and we need to throw in x y t h and n very simple to use this function and now we need to uh, print our results because we need to check our results so our t vector is basically um, uh, oh, since we are dealing with vectors, maybe it is better to write our own uh, print function. So we say it should be a void and we have a print, whoops, print vector. And this is going to get a steady vector of double. Of course, we are sending it by reference. So this is our um, declaration. Now we need to make our definition here set of curly braces and maybe it is also nice to have a open bracket just like that and we need a loop to go through our elements our elements in the vector are of type double and this is called element and they are within within this uh, v vector we don't forget our um, curly braces and what we want to do is simply to print the element and between each element it is good to put a uh, comma and also note that we don't forget uh, to close this bracket just like that yeah so and now we can basically use this uh, print uh, function for our t which is a type vector of doubles and now we can basically copy these lines 
and use it for x and change this one to x use it for y and change this one to y okay i think this logically it is okay because um, we have solution vector we have our h we have our initial conditions runge kutta function and then we are printing um, the finite results okay let's ask the opinion of the compiler about this so i will call it as output and whoops okay the good thing is that we only have one error and it's not an error it's just a warning it says range based loop is okay it is part of the c plus plus 11 extension of course we have to add the standard of c plus plus 11 and this should be fine okay now let's try um to test it and i don't know i put five for example here and let's check the results um, first things first, t looks okay because the first one is 0, this is 1h, this is 2h, this is 3h, and so on. And 6 and 4 are okay because these are our initial values. And this value here, let me check it, it says 6.2935. Yes, it looks okay. 4.5393.2. 4.53932. Yes, it was also okay. So you see, um, so the aim of this video, as I said, is that um, so the heart of this this program is how to formulate this. Also, notice that you cannot calculate f1, f2, f3, f4, and then g1, g2, g3. The reason is for calculation of f2 you need to know what is your g1 so basically the order here really really matters because i mean the order between the first and the second line doesn't matter because you can calculate g1 first and then f1 because you already have these values of um, t old x old and y old but bear in mind that you cannot write f1 and then immediately f2 because for F2, you need to know your G1. So the order really matters. So this means each step, step one, step two, step three, for the calculation of intermediate values needs to be preserved. This is very, very important. Okay. And, um, and you know that we have used this, used this uh, method for this fictitious um, F and G functions, but you need to have one um, equation for your t of oil and one equation for the t of uh, air and then you will have completely different functionality here but um, you already know that you have a concrete solved example of a um, runge kutta method for a coupled system of differential equations okay i think that's uh, enough for today